Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the On Time On Target morning and brief for Invest in Fighter Power Precision on a daily basis. Sorry for the late start today. Wanted to get this topic right. Uh, so I switched topics here in game, but we certainly need to talk about the uh, Merck pill that's out this morning that's kind of dominating the news and how that's affecting some of the major vaccine stocks out there. So when you think uh, Pfizer, M Moderna, BioNTech, uh, Invax, uh, Novavax, there's some definite names out there that are selling off pretty hard. Uh, so that's our topic of the day. So I want to make sure I got that right. Uh, so we'll, we'll have to come up, come back to some of that uh, after the open here in a few minutes. But futures are in the green on the news. Maybe it's, uh, you know, certainly it lives up to the hype uh, that could help with the reopening play uh, going into closing out 2021. On a positive note, as far as the fight versus uh, the vaccine, if you remember 2021 in review was <clears throat> we needed stimulus that got passed. We need to beat the virus that happened. And then it kind of undid itself with the Delta variant and some of the you know fallout from it. Uh, so we're in various stages of reopening slash closing again, slash trying to reopen slash we don't have the workers for the restaurants, you know, kind of issues. Uh, the infrastructure bill uh, was obviously was, you know, still kind of a, a political football. Uh, but and then the, the last one was we needed to deal with tax reform. Well, you know, we'll, we'll get to that. And that's kind of the hangover going into uh, the fourth quarter. But certainly with beating the vaccine, the Merck uh, development this morning or potential development, I guess you should say, since it's a little bit early, um, is going to help with that reopening trade. And maybe now the market goes higher. Uh, quarter three was a little rough especially September, worst month we've had since March 2020. So uh, at least we're getting the quarter started off on a on a good foot, if you will. Uh, a couple of you know, announcements, you know, you know, did to continue to grow in the third quarter as far as a company. Uh, so those numbers will be out today to those that are investors. Uh, also, a special birthday today uh, to somebody here in the room. So happy birthday. I uh, will talk to you a little bit later today. All right, our topic for today is, or uh, question for the day is some tax loss harvesting. So we'll cover over some of that once we get through the open. As far as the longs, you can see we've got Merck and uh, GBTC, which is the Bitcoin uh, ETF. Those are going higher. Uh, and then the shorts are all the medical related, right? The Invax, BioNTech, and Pfizer. We'll get back to those in a minute. And with that, let's go ahead and get started. All right, here's our lineup card for today, October 1st. Standard disclaimer applies this is a financial education presentation, so you have to do your own due diligence before acting on anything you read this morning. Full disclaimer information is available at ototnow.com. All right, mission objectives, as always, grow our money, protect our money, and live off our money. We're trying to grow our money, <clears throat> specifically uh, looking at the inv investing in the vaccine stocks. Many of these names we've held for a while. Pfizer, Moderna, BioNTech. Uh, and the question is, has the money been made? I will show you the charts. We'll have to come back after the open to look at the charts. But I will contend the money's pretty much been made. Uh, these aren't going to sell off too hard, but uh, you're not going to see the growth that they had early, you know, especially in 2021 and excuse me, 2020 and then into 2021. Uh, last after we get through the open stuff, what is tax loss harvesting? We'll take a look at that. Our flow, long, short, open, short, long. We'll look at these four names once we come back to the long-term stuff. And then contingencies and academic resources are standard. All right, let's go over to TD Ameritrade ThinkPipe's platform and kind of set up for the open. Uh, and I'll be right back for that. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the On Time on Target Play of the day. You have four screens in front of you on the TDA Ameritrade ThinkPipe's platform. We have the S&P over here on the one minute chart. You can see that it's going higher. Uh, as far as the futures, we have Merck on the way up. We have GBTC on the way up, which again is Bitcoin. Then Invax is our number one short. Here's the opening bell. All right. So we'll kind of take a look at these. I like the longs, but again, shorts are generally uh, more compelling. So this is down 9% here on the Invax. <clears throat> so we'll take a look at that. GBTC up 10%. I'm going to take a look at another uh, BNTX as far as a short. So again, it'll be a long, excuse me here, we get to the <clears throat> BNTX. All right. So I like that a little bit better. A little tougher to trade though. Uh, so it's down 7%. Let's take a look at Pfizer and see how far that's down. 
down only a percent in Pfizer and then Moderna mRNA down 7%. Again, all these are kind of tough as far as the uh, points. So let's look at Moderna, Mark Long here, if you will. This is going to be a little bit of a dart throw, if you will, looking at an 80 cent stop. 82.20, we're kind of at that point. Whew. We're at that 10%. That's certainly a little more attractive though than the rest of these. Trying to justify the math at all. Trying to cover down to 81.40, 82.40. If we could get this entry, it would be kind of nice. And again, the entry would be all on that oral uh, pill from the Merck, uh, from the Merck company, Merck and uh, Ridgeback. All right, Mark is starting to come in here in minute two, so I'm hoping that sells off a little bit. I don't think we're going to get that. I just don't think we're going to get that entry. Oof. All right. It's breaking our pattern a little bit here. Okay, here we're going to get that entry. So we're going to... Take it long back at 83 and cover it down to 82 for a dollar stop. We'll see if we can get a better number here, but we're going to take Merck long if it hits 83 again or when it hits 83. It'd be nice if this sold off a little more. I just don't think it's going to. Um, and it'll be an 80 cent stop. We'll cover it 82.20, which obviously isn't the low of the day. Uh, you know, that's around 81.5. We're just not going to get that entry down there. All right, 82 or 83 evens the entry. There it is, 83. We're taking it long and you're covering it. Well, I want you to draw. There we go. 83 is long is your entry point. So that's the entry point. We're covering 82. We'll do a 75 cent stop. So 82.25, actually we'll do 30. Uh, 82.30, so 70 cents stop here. So at 83.70 is going to be our first point, our first R. And we get the arrow drawn here, so there's no confusion. Again, 70 cents is the stop. Moving so fast, can't even get the arrow drawn. All right, A3, A3, 70. So that means Friday morning math, 84.40 is the 2R point. Write these down since we don't have them on the chart. And then 70 on top of that is 85.10. So set your exit points at 85.10 on the top end. Uh, and then you're, again, you're covering at 82.30 on the low end. All right, so a little non-standard entry for uh, where we like it, but uh, that's that's a good end of the good trade. We're up in our point again, uh, covering at 82.30 down here. If it hits that, we're back out for a minus one R. Otherwise, we're hanging out for 85.10, which is the three R uh, trade. All right, let's look at the shorts. Looks like Invax would have worked. Moderna hasn't fallen enough. We'll get rid of uh, Invex. And let's see, Pfizer was barely down at all, down 2%. And then let's see, Moderna, BioNTech, BNTX, down 10%. So, again, trying to cover up here at 254, only nine. That's, again, you don't really have the entries on these short uh, as well. Market is coming in, so uh, let's see, five straight red um, stripes here for each minute. So one green minute and then five in a row down to the downside. Uh, so I think that's gonna affect our trade. It's gonna come in here, but then I think it's gonna flip and, and go higher once, this, once the uh, market kind of settles into the groove for the day. All right, so we're in our trade. I'm gonna switch out of the trade for a second just to 
uh, be able to take a look at things longer term. All right, what's up today? We talked about uh, Q4 being a boon for potentially all cryptocurrencies, not just um, not just your Bitcoins and Ethereum, uh, but here's the two major plays, 7% on Ethereum, 6% on MSTR, your Bitcoin proxy. And again, GBTC is up almost at 10% as well. There's the CRPT, that's the cryptocurrencies across the board ETF, uh, which I do like um, and have some money in. And then see DraftKings is up, Disney is up. Disney's actually pretty attractive right here. Um, Neo, the Chinese automaker's up, Twitter's up, GoDaddy's up, but GoDaddy's been kind of slaughtered lately. Uh, Raytheon, Boeing, Lockheed Martin's probably in here somewhere. I don't see it offhand. Let's look at the red side. All right, some speculative names up at the top. There's our Pfizer down 2%. Blackstone off a little bit, but you can see not too many uh, red names, even though the market's only barely in the green. All right, check back on our trade real quick. Trade's doing fine. Again, we're in the green. We'll come back to that here in a minute. We need it to be up to be about, Mark, to me, need to be up about 13%, though, to make our trade complete. All right, let's come back to cnbc.com real quick and go over some things. All right, here we are now that the market's open. That's not what I meant to do. There we go, hit the refresh button here. All right, there you can see in the green across the board, um, Dow up a couple hundred and trying to hold that, if you will. Across the board in Europe, uh, mixed and light. It was actually red earlier when I first got up. It was bright red, actually. And Asia is mixed as well. As far as bonds, one point, so below that 1.5 level now. Oil right at 75, gold and silver popping up a little bit, especially silver. And then crypto, here's your big gains, right? So we were looking at Bitcoin earlier in the week at 42,000. I mentioned it was one of the major themes for quarter four. Um, and I think a lot of people, believe me, or a lot of people are in the same, uh, same boat with that. So uh, that is what's going on in the crypto world as far as Really, the headlines are all around this Merck uh, pill. Uh, I, to me, it came out of nowhere. I did, not, I did not hear anybody really talking about this until this morning. So that's why I switched to it. Uh, let's see, Kathy Wood. Yeah, there's a big jump in um, energy and oil stocks. And people are, uh, I got a text yesterday from somebody I hadn't heard from in a while uh, because they'd been wrong for forever. And uh, they had said that they were you know, now right because oil's the wave of the future. It's like, it's just not, um, yeah, those stocks are up, but it's certainly not the wave of the future. Okay, let's go over to FinViz real quick. I wanna look at these, you know, the question becomes with these, um, with the, look at Merck first, with the vaccine stocks, has the money been made? Well, you certainly see here on the Merck, again, it wasn't one of the original gangsters, if you will, as far as the big three, but we'll look at all those, the Pfizer's, the BioNTech's, and Moderna's, but certainly uh, now it looks like it's got room to go higher. And again, that's the trade we're in on, on another screen. So really, if you wanted to get into one of them, you would get in on Merck. Uh, let's look at Pfizer. Pfizer's, I mean, if Pfizer's a good term, good long-term hold, but certainly it did peak out at 50 after this big run-up. It's kind of come in since then. I don't see it selling off too much. That's why it's not selling off uh, this morning too much. But I think, yeah, you can say, okay, the money has been made. You go back into, you know, March of this year or on into last year, it was hanging down in the, in the high 30s um, and, you know, went up to 50. Maybe you didn't exit. Maybe you did. Maybe you trimmed some. But anyhow, has the money been made? Yeah. I mean, it, I don't see it just flipping around and going north of 50 anytime soon. So um, especially if quarter four turns out to be a challenging quarter, and it's certainly not going to do that. All right, BioNTech is the next one we'll talk about. Same sort of thing. Peaked back here at the uh, mid to end of August. Um, same sort of trajectory. Has the money been made? Yeah, probably. I think you could move on. That's a pretty, pretty strong move down from 450 to below 300. I mean, gosh, that's what? Uh, over 30% haircut off of where it was. So Man, money had been made there in the last one, Moderna, MRNA. Same sort of thing, big run up. It hasn't sold off as much, um, but certainly, uh, you know, has the money been made? Yes, I think it has. So uh, that's my take on that.
All right, last thing I'll leave you with is some tax loss harvesting. So Investopedia tax loss harvesting. And uh, selling of securities at a loss to offset capital gains. So there are certain things you do in quarter four. <clears throat> you look at required minimum distributions, uh, which are again an I or A thing that you have to take out a minimum amount either from, because you're of the age, do you have to take out of your own? Or you have an inherited IRA of some sort that you again, you know, you have 10 years to take out of it. Either way, uh, if you have a required minimum distribution, your uh, custodian has that for you listed right there on your statement. That's something I track as well. And we come up with a plan in the quarter four for all of those, not necessarily today, because I'm doing an in quarter closeout uh, from last night. But in the long term, this is the one you want to, uh, it's going to be on the to do list here fairly quickly to uh, get things taken care of. After you get rid of the RMD, then you look at your tax loss harvesting. Again, this is only in stocks that uh, are in a taxable account. If they're in IRAs or other, you know, 529s or, you know, other types of accounts, you don't get the benefit from doing this. But certainly if you have losers in your account and it's a taxable account, then you can sell off those losers. And again, you get credit for it on your taxes. So just like when it goes, stocks go higher, in a taxable account and you sell them, then you have to pay the capital gains. Here, you're going to have capital losses. And if you have enough of them, <clears throat> you can offset all of your gains and then an additional $3,000. Um, so there's lots of things that are really in the finer workings of how this works, but you have to go through position by position and look at each portfolio and make the smart uh, decision. There. So, all right. <clears throat> Looks like the market is Barely hanging on in the green there. So again, we'll uh, hope to get a good start here on the first day of the fourth quarter. And with that, we'll see. Hope you guys have a great weekend and we'll see you back Monday morning. Bye.